Midnight news coming to you live from Algiers. I'm your host, Madame Zian, and here are your top stories for tonight. The Zionist occupation forces executed five massacres in 24 hours, resulting in 43 deaths and 64 injuries. Palestinian Civil Defense Service calls for international probe into field executions, and factions blame U.S. and West for potential Rafah invasion. Also coming up, university students in the U.S. and Europe rise against Gaza massacres and police detentions spark global movement. Next, Algerian Foreign Minister affirms positive outcomes from tripartite summit in Tunisia and calls for diplomatic unity. Welcome back to the program. At the outset, Palestinian Health Ministry said that the occupation committed five massacres during the past 24 hours, leaving 43 martyrs and 64 injured. The Palestinian Civil Defense Service also said that the occupation forces committed field executions in the Nasser Medical Complex south of the Gaza Strip, demanding the opening of an international investigation into these crimes. Following a national meeting on Wednesday, Palestinian factions have unequivocally placed blame on the U.S. administration and Western community for any potential ground invasion of Rafah by Zionist forces. They cite what they perceive as extensive coordination between the Israeli occupation and the U.S. authorities regarding invasion plans. The factions emphasize that the ongoing genocidal campaign waged by the Zionist entity against Palestinian identity will not restore the prestige of its army, especially after facing resistance. They warn of the catastrophic humanitarian repercussions of any such aggression on the city of Rafah. The American administration and the Western community bear full responsibility for any ground Zionist invasion of the city of Rafah, especially since there is complete coordination by the American administration regarding the military plans to invade the city. We warn of the catastrophic and humanitarian repercussions of any ground aggression against the city of Rafah, which would completely stop the flow of aid to our people in the Gaza Strip through the Rafah crossing, the only remaining lifeline for our people who are subjected to a war of genocide and mass starvation. Palestinian factions warned of a comprehensive explosion in the entire region if the occupation's aggression against Gaza and its insistence on invading Rafah continues. Let's have a listen. We warn of a comprehensive escalation and explosion that will affect the entire region and threaten the national security of the entire region, and the Egyptian national security in particular, due to its geographical connection with the Gaza Strip. If the Zionist enemy continues its arrogance and aggression and insists on a ground invasion of the city of Rafah, Algeria's Foreign Minister Mr. Ahmad Attaf reiterated that Algeria holds the distinction of being the first nation to successfully advocate for a passage of resolution in the UN Security Council, establishing a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip and facilitating the entry of humanitarian aid. During a meeting with representatives of the national press on Thursday, Minister Attaf emphasized that his country remains steadfast in its endeavors to secure full membership for the state of Palestine within the United Nations. He also underscored Algeria's strategic commitment to achieving this goal, aligning closely with the directives of Algerian President Mr. Abdelmajid Tabun, who prominently addressed this issue in his recent speech before the UN General Assembly.
Algeria's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ammar Ben Jama, reiterated a caution against any potential ground assault on Rafah, emphasizing the imperative of preventing such actions under all circumstances. Speaking during a Security Council session addressing the situation in the Middle East, particularly the Palestinian issue, Benjama highlighted the significance of Rafah to the well-being of Palestinians in Gaza. He underscored that any aggression against Rafah would lead to a humanitarian disaster. Access to the Gaza Strip, we warn again against any military action in Rafah. Such an offensive should not be allowed by under any circumstances. 1.5 million Palestinians are crammed into Rafa, which has become the humanitarian hub of Gaza. The survival of Gaza entire population depends on situation on this city. A ground offensive will leave people with no choice, no choice but to flee to Egypt. It will not be only, only a humanitarian catastrophe, but an irreversible breach of peace and security not just in the region, but beyond. In response to the ongoing aggression in Gaza, the Arab League Council, represented by its permanent delegates, strongly condemned the continued genocide and aggression by the Zionist occupation. This condemnation encompasses acts such as deliberate starvation, forced displacement and systematic destruction of livelihoods in Gaza. The Council, in a resolution at the conclusion of its extraordinary session, warned against the potential invasion of Rafah by Zionist forces, anticipating it as a more devastating bloodshed. Student protesters in the United Nations have vowed to continue demonstrations against the occupation's war on Gaza. This comes despite police arresting more than 100 protesters. Nabil Khazini has more details. Voices are rising every day in universities in the United States and in Europe to denounce the genocidal massacres that the occupation has been committed in Gaza for over 200 days. What started at Columbia University in the U.S. has grown. Similarly, other campuses went vocal, saying they won't disperse until the universities agree to cut ties with the occupation academic institutions and commit to a complete divestment of their funds from entities connected to the occupation. It is insane that this educational institution that preaches all these high, lofty ideals about education and understanding and making the world a better place is making money off of death and destruction and genocide. Police was heavily present during the protests and faced the students with handcuffs. Over 100 were detained. Students had something to say about police reaction. This is a protest where 108 students were arrested peacefully without resistance. They didn't start, you know, beating up the cops. The cops didn't start beating up them. Um, and where, you know, there has been acts of violence. There has been um, incidents of, of um, absolutely unacceptable violence. The wave of students' protest reached Europe, where in the French capital Paris, Students called on the French government to help Palestinians. They gathered outside Sorbonne University, where French President Emmanuel Macron was making a speech. United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Occupied Palestinian Territories, Francesca Albanese, called on Thursday the Zionist entity for immediate and unconditional sanctions, which should entail first and foremost an arms and oil embargo on the Zionist entity. 
Last month, Francesca Albanese told the UN rights body in Geneva that she believed that the occupation's military campaign in Gaza since October 7 amounted to genocide and called on countries to immediately impose sanctions and an arms embargo. To have legal protection. Israeli policies spanning the occupied Palestinian territory are unquestionably endangering Palestinian, Palestinian existence on their land or what remains of their land. The focus of the international community must zero in on the most likely implication, the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. And states must do everything in their power to prevent it. At this point, Israel has reneged on its international obligations to a degree that warrants an imperative implementation of immediate and unconditional sanctions which should entail, first and foremost, an arms and oil embargo. In different developments, Algerian President Mr. Abmajid Tabouni received on Thursday Speaker of the Canadian House of Commons, Greg Fergus. A statement by the Algerian presidency explained that the meeting took place in the presence of the president of the Algerian National People's Assembly, Brahim Bourali, and the secretary general of the presidency, Abdullah Manji, after being received by the Algerian president, the president of the Canadian Chamber of Commons, stressed that uh, political and commercial exchanges would strengthen ties between Algeria and Canada, which are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between them. I received a warm welcome from President Abdel Majid Taboun, and it is an honor for me to visit Algeria, this wonderful country that I discovered for the first time. We touched on several issues of concern to our countries, and as you know, Algeria and Canada are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations, 60 years of friendship, cultural and economic exchange. Bilateral exchanges, as you may know, both commercial and political, constitute to strengthening relations between Algeria and Canada. Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf met with Omar Touray, the chairman of the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS Commission, to discuss political and security developments in the Sahel-Saharan region, according to a statement by the Algerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The same source added that both parties exchange views and analyses on these matters, aiming to enhance coordination to address common challenges faced by the countries and peoples of the region. Therese's visit to Algeria as part of the ongoing dialogue and consultation between Algeria and ACOAS on issues related to their shared interests and space, the statement mentioned. Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf affirmed that the inaugural gathering in Tunisia uniting President Tabboun, Tunisian President Qais Sayyid and Libyan Presidential Council head Mohamed Yunus El Minfi yielded positive outcomes. Attaf emphasized that the success of the meeting was not coincidental or meant to replace the Arab Maghreb Union. During a meeting with national press representatives on Thursday, the Algerian Foreign Minister underscored Algeria's diplomatic endeavors across various current affairs. He emphasized that the recent consultative session among the three leaders in Tunisia is not aimed at antagonizing any party. Additionally, the Algerian Foreign Minister verified that the initial consultative summit among the leaders of Algeria, Tunisia and Libya yielded favorable outcomes, particularly on the political front.
Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Atov affirmed that the success of the recent consultative gathering in Tunisia, which convened President Tabun, Tunisian President Qais Saied, and Libyan Presidential Council head Mohamed Yunus Al Manfi, he emphasized that the achievement was uncircumstantial and doesn't deserve a replacement for the Arab Maghreb Union. During a meeting with national press representatives on Thursday, Minister Atov underscored Algeria's diplomatic efforts. Various, across various contemporary issues and reiterated that the summit was not aimed at any specific party. Minister Ataf also confirmed the positive outcomes of the inaugural consultative meeting among the leaders of Algeria, Tunisia and Libya, particularly highlighting the political significance, noting its unprecedented nature compared to previous summits. He highlighted the frank discussions between the three leaders, reflected in the comprehensive final statement focusing on four key areas, border area development, energy, food security and resolving trade exchange challenges. These priorities, he added, would guide joint actions leading up to the next summit in Tripoli in three months. Minister Ataf added that the Arab Maghreb Union remains a pivotal project and historical aspiration emphasizing that avenues for consultation are open to all parties with political intent and will. He disclosed President Taboo's long-standing contemplation of the tripartite in initiative discussed with Maghreb leaders and foreign ministers during their visit to Algeria. Minister Ataf noted the unique absence of a regular consultation mechanism in North Africa and the Maghreb, contrasting it with other global regions. Minister Ataf highlighted President Taboon's pre persistent advocacy for establishing a mechanism to address the void left by the lack of regional consultation and to amplify the region's voice in international and regional forums. Expressing regret, he noted the Maghreb's fundamental role in global affairs, citing examples like the Libyan crisis in Sahel Saharan region, where the region's countries are primarily affected but often sidelined in discussions. Regarding the Sahel-Saharan region, Minister Ataf emphasized Algeria's proactive stance affirming its commitment to ensuring regional security and stability. He noted ongoing consultations to address evolving situations in the region, advocating for political solutions to challenges in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso. Minister Ataf stressed the imperative of heightened vigilance and intensified efforts in light of deteriorating conditions. In a different context, Minister Ataf assured that there are no issues in Algerian-French relations, revealing plans for an upcoming meeting with his French counterpart to prepare for forthcoming negotiations between Algeria and France. Army General Saeed Shingriha, Chief of Staff of the People's National Army, highlighted the impact of double standards in international affairs on global peace efforts. He emphasized that prioritizing force over the principles of peace and cooperation between nations has hindered the UN and international organizations from achieving world peace and averting conflicts. General Shingriha underscored the prevailing trend where military strength continues to be the primary means for states to safeguard their territories and sovereignty in today's international landscape. This new international reality showed us, without a shadow of doubt, that the military force will remain the state's main choice to defend their land and their right to live in peace and enjoy sovereignty. The practical classical military solutions continue to be an option despite the emergence of other types of wars such as the hybrid wars and the tendency to include other tools to the new revolution in military issues like artificial intelligence.
This new strategic environment showed the failure of UN and international bodies to achieve global peace and prevent wars on account of many reasons, for most of which the double standard in dealing with the issues and the favoring of the principle of force and national interests over the principles of global peace and the peaceful coexistence among nations. In this context, the Chief of Staff of the Algerian Army praised the successes of Algerian diplomacy and its contributions to resolving international conflicts by peaceful means, in addition to its crucial role in defending the right of peoples to self-determination. Let's take a listen. The contribution of Algerian diplomacy, its wise foreign policy and skills in resolving conflicts through peaceful means, its steadfast role and firm convictions in defending the right of occupied peoples to self-determination and its perseverance in calling for the establishment of a more just and humane international order in accordance with relevant international resolutions must be praised. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has called Washington and Beijing to manage their disputes in a responsible manner. Blinken held meetings with local government officials in the Chinese financial hub of Shanghai, home to more than 1,000 U.S. companies. The visit comes as Washington and Beijing are divided over a range of issues. More international news with Marwa Belaywar. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry has officially stepped down and a new interim government has been inaugurated in a secret ceremony at the presidential palace. This comes nearly two months after a criminal uprising threw the capital into turmoil. The formation of the nine-member Transitional Council was formalized on Thursday at the National Palace in Port-au-Prince. Meanwhile, Henry, who is currently in the U.S. due to the gang unrest, announced his resignation in a written statement. Bangladesh sent home nearly 300 Myanmar troops and civil servants on Thursday, who sought refuge across the border due to the attacks on their outposts. Conflict has plagued Myanmar since the 2021 military coup, with ongoing clashes between the Arakan army and military forces leading to hundreds of troops fleeing into Bangladesh. The country has stepped up security along its border with Myanmar, fearing that the conflict there could trigger another major influx. A major fire that engulfed a restaurant and a hotel in eastern India on Thursday killed at least six people and injured 20, a local fire officer said. The fire began when a cooking gas cylinder exploded while dinners were eaten in the restaurant and it soon spread into an adjacent hotel. At least 40 people were rescued from the two buildings by firefighters who dosed the place using more than a dozen fire engines. <laughs> China is sending a new crew to its Xiangong space station as part of a program to send astronauts to the moon by 2030. The three astronauts of Shinzu-18 mission take off abroad a spacecraft installed on a Long March 2F career rocket from the Xiquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. They are expected to stay in the Xiangong station for six months, conducting experiments in different fields. Uh, 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 the fourth edition of the Annaba Mediterranean Film Festival kicked off on Wednesday evening and will run until the end of the month. This year's festival features a significant turnout of artists and directors from 18 Mediterranean countries with a special focus on the Palestinian issue and the ongoing genocide in the Gaza Strip. Hussein Barkan has more details. In the company of esteemed artists and notable stars, the fourth edition of the Anaba Mediterranean Film Festival kicked off on Wednesday evening, set to run until the 13th of this month, with a strong turnout of artists and directors from 18 Mediterranean countries. This edition of the festival has dedicated an extensive program to address the Palestinian issue and the ongoing genocide affecting the people of Gaza. 
Palestine is strongly present through Viva Palestina and seven short films at a symposium on Palestinian cinema. The role of Palestinian cinema is supporting the struggle and the Palestinian cause, as well as the difficulties of Palestinian production. The Mediterranean cinema audiences have an appointment with two symposium that shed light on Palestinian and Italian cinema. The first symposium, entitled Palestinian Cinema, Testimonies, Resilience and Impact, focuses on the decisive role of Palestinian cinema in preserving history and cultural steadfastness and its influence as a means of awareness and defense. Art is our weapon. It's our way to send our voice and make it heard to the West and the whole world with what is happening with us and all our daily suffering. It is very, very important and I'm very proud to be here. The Spanish actress Itziar Itonio, who was honored yesterday evening, highlighted that this event constitutes a window for defending just and humanitarian causes. Wow, this is very, very uh, incredible, amazing. Um, I love Anaba, Anaba, the food, the people, the festival. Uh, I, I'm very happy here and um, thank you for all. Shukram. <laughs> and, uh, but at this moment... The fourth edition of the Anaba Mediterranean Film Festival stands as a testament to the power of cinema in advocating for social justice and raising awareness about pressing humanitarian issues through its diverse program and vibrant discussions. The festival continues to serve as a vital platform for fostering dialogue and understanding among Mediterranean communities. <laughs>